Yo, 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 it's your boy, the snail of the sacred variety here. This is Ocean's 12 movie review. Now, if you watched the last video, you know that I love Ocean's 11. It's one of my favorite movies. I love everything about it. I've, got, I've gotten pretty much no complaints about that movie. I really don't have any complaints about that movie. But this is Ocean's 12. And this is a different story, okay? This is a different. This is a different story. So we start out, and we got, you know, the same great cast. Everyone's back, and the movie starts with a bang, you know, introducing, you know, because in the in the Ocean's Eleven, you had each cast member kind of just doing doing their thing, and it shows them doing their thing in their day to day lives, which is really really sick. Twelve, I think, opens, you know, just. Even almost, you can almost argue that it opens even in a better way, which with um the you know the the last dude they stole from kind of getting back at them um, in different ways. You know he blows he blows Brad Pitt's car up. He uh, he goes to George Clooney's house. Everybody's everybody he, you know everybody is uh, being confronted by um by this by this man that they stole from in the last movie and now he wants all the money back but they're too hot in this country they say um so they have to go to europe which i think is just an excuse just to go to europe you know just to have the movie in a different location but europe's awesome i, th I think they, they i don't i i don't i rather i think the vegas is cooler vegas is a lot cooler um setting for me but europe is you know i haven't been to europe so it's cool to see europe uh, and all the all that you know the different the different architecture there and stuff like that so you know the setting of this movie is a lot different too because you have um a lot more like night shots in vegas and there's a lot more day shots in europe so there's a whole different vibe to this movie um you know you also have of course again uh the wardrobe which is just insane you know uh everyone has these tailored suits from one of the best costume designers uh, ever. Um, I can't remember his name, but I know he's the dude with the ponytail um, because he's actually in the movie. So yeah, you know, great costume designs. Um, everyone looks super spiffy. Uh, so yeah, it's like, so what you think you might, you might ask yourself, what's different about Ocean's 12 than Ocean's 11? And I'll tell you this: you have the same kind of humor, you have the same kind of the there's there's a there's a similar flow to this one where the scenes just flow together. This one I think it slows down a smidge, but it's still a very fast paced movie. The soundtrack is a literal it's a it's a little bit it's a little it drags a little bit more than the first one in the third Oceans movie, but it's still an awesome soundtrack. It's a great soundtrack. Um, so it has all the same bells and whistles as that first movie except for i'll tell you what they kind of messed up on in my opinion and that is the laser scene where we have this 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 bored millionaire or billionaire i don't remember which one i'm just gonna say millionaire but he they call him night fox and he leaves a fox whenever he does a job um and it's a little it sounds a little goofy and it is and what and, it, and it's it's not over the edge goofy you know you can be a mil bored millionaire called night fox that's cool with me but when the dude called night fox starts dancing around la lasers that are visible to the naked eye it gets a little bit goofy man and you know like there are uh there are sensors to see in real life that you can see you know you can see you can you can they can, they can detect you you move your ankle across that line, they're gonna detect you. But you cannot see that line with the naked eye, so that you can you can actively avoid it. That kind of defeats the purpose of it. Um, so you know, it's it's very like it's very early two thousand spy movie uh, esque. You know, we have the laser room that the dude's gonna go through. It's like it's so cheesy. It's just so cheesy. We also have like the in, the the ending is I like the ending. But there is like a 10 minute uh, part in the last act that I just think is completely unnecessary and uninteresting and kind of just like, 
puts a little dent in the vehicle of this movie. Okay? Because there's just some twists and turns and it, it's almost a bit overkill and goofy. And it's like, you know, I, I think most people, um, including myself, would rather just have... Um, just let the move if on the on the third act of the movie the heist is over you know um what i wanted to see is just the celebration i thought the celebration was great um we have a scene cel- you know everyone's celebrating everyone's getting everyone's getting zooted having a good time but before that we have this big you know long-winded explanation where there's just this twist and they're explaining this twist and it's just it's a little tedious it's kind of like it's and I'm making a big deal about it. It's not. It's it's literally it's literally ten minutes I'm complaining about. Okay, but um, the next thing I want to complain about is this is this movie. It just has some. It just seems a little bit goofy and far fetched at some points, like with the laser scene. And the reason I don't like that is because the first Ocean's Eleven felt very real and grounded. You could like that could have actually happened, or you know that that it. Uh, you know, you really think, oh, this Danny Ocean, Danny Ocean and his crew. You could think this could be based off a true story. When I watched it, uh, this one feels like it's pretty. You know, it's a Hollywood movie, um, and it starts to feel like that more and more as these goofy things appear. Um, so, you know, I think um, the first one it makes you feel like, man, I could pull off a heist. I could do that. This one makes me feel like I'm watching a Hollywood movie. Um, but yeah, the cast obviously is the main. The soundtrack, the the camera work, the set design, and the cast are what drive this movie. Even with its goofy ideas, it still pulls it off because the cast is so great, the production crew is so great, the soundtrack is so great. Um, Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt, this he's he kind of. Um, you know, has that same swagger from that first movie. Um, he really just, he still had that, uh, that, um, kind of, he called it a gimmick where he's always eating and he has that, he has these sort of movements that make, that you really, that make Brad Pitt stand out, you know? I love Brad Pitt and he just has that air of swagger around him. Same with George Clooney, when they get together, it becomes like a force that you cannot mess with. Nobody can outswagger George Clooney and Brad Pitt. If they walk in the room, you better, you better have some swag or you're going to get out swagged. And then when you add the rest of the crew together, you know, with uh, Bernie Madoff, you know, we're just talking about um, like literally like uh, just a, a team of just, just a, a, like a unprecedented unprecedented amount of swag um that you that you cannot it's so hard to find in another in another cast um obviously like scott con comes to mind you know casey affleck you know um they're all just so they all have their you at this point you if you watch ocean 11 oceans 11 you know kind of the character traits and this just kind of just expands on them and you know you get to see them you get to see them just be them and interact and um it's just it's a great it's a great it's a great thing great character interaction between all of them i love it i love it um but yeah i mean the movie it also looks great for the time um because this time they actually added a bit more like handheld shots and it kind of does even though this movie's goofier, the handheld handheld shots actually like add something to make it feel a bit more real and um, grounded in reality. So you know, uh, is this as good as Ocean's Eleven? I think this is almost as good. I have to knock it down a point and say this is like an eight, in my opinion. But uh, it's still it's still very it's still a very good movie in my mind. Um, and uh, it's not quite as cool and collected as Ocean's Eleven, but it is just as funny and just as entertaining. 
And some people might even like it more because it's a bit goofier and takes itself less seriously. I prefer the slightly more serious Ocean's Eleven to this one, but you know, um, I get how someone would like the goofy, the, the goofiness of this movie. You know, you have Julia Roberts playing Julia Roberts. You know, we have uh, Matt Damon's um, mom and dad b being part of the heist. You know, um, but uh, it's one thing I forgot is that we got Brad Pitt and his uh, his and his uh, love interest. You know, they have actually like a really cool uh, part in the story. I think she was a uh, uh, she was great in the story, and um, yeah, I really I really think she added a lot with her kind of. Um, as being kind of this uh, opposing force. And that's the end of my review. Thank you for watching. Hit the subscribe if you feel like it. Uh, hit me up if you want to do a heist. Because I am down to go steal something. Booyah!